Let me tell you, the stakes were ridiculously high for this game. Yes, they for were. For both teams. Because, look, Chris, and, and Peter King made this point last week, and he'll be joining us in about 25 minutes, and we'll give him a chance to do a little victory lap on this one. The 49ers go from being the team that we assume will be the number one seed in the NFC to now being a team that is going to have to fight and scratch and claw the rest of the way to hold on to the division title. Because as it stands... They have one loss. Seahawks have two. If the Seahawks are within that one-game window going into Week 17, when these two teams get together again, that would be it's going to be amazing. I mean, that, I just that's I, for the NFC West. Right. There's our there's our Week 17 Sunday night game. It's Giants Cowboys 1993 all over again. Right. Where the winner gets the one seed. And the loser has oh, to do it the hard card. way. Yeah, right. That was in my. That was uh, the Sims family was on the short end of the stick there, and that game went into overtime. And yeah, man, that still hurts me. Still hurts my dad too. Uh, but it was. It was an. Sorry, un- Phil. Yeah, sorry, Phil. Uh, screw Phil Sims. But either way, it was. Uh, yeah, monumental. I mean, teams like the Saints who slipped up this weekend, and you know the Packers who slipped up last weekend. All of a sudden, they're looking at it, going, "Oh, we're we're back in the thick of things here." Oh, wait. And we got the 49ers on our schedule in a few weeks, so we can even the playing field right there and really still have a chance to be the one or two seed. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say this, okay? I still think the 49ers are the better football team than the Seattle Seahawks. I don't know if I think it's realistic for Seattle to be able to win the way they did last night with all the defensive turnovers and doing that. Now, maybe they proved to me down the stretch that this becomes a consistent thing on a week-to-week basis. And if it does, then I apologize. But I still think I would take the 49ers here down the stretch. As much as I respect Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson and Bobby Wagner and the way they play and approach the game, uh, I still think the 49ers are the best team in the NFC. Maybe not by as big a margin as I thought going into the game, though. Well, and you know, it's good news for the teams that are vying for the top spot in the NFC that the 49ers lost. Very good news for the Packers and the Saints. And obviously excellent news for the Seahawks, who needed to avoid picking up their third loss. But for the teams looking at the wild card berth, that was a horrible outcome last night. If you're the Rams, you had to be rooting for the 49ers to win that game. Go ahead and concede the division to them. Right. Hope the Seahawks you're fall right, down right. Yes. so you can climb back into it. It was a bad outcome for the Rams, bad outcome for the Vikings, bad outcome for any other the team Eagles. that is hoping to tr- – exactly, trying to get a wild card berth. Because what we've seen now with the Seahawks winning, it cements the Seahawks as either the five or the six seed. It only leaves one spot open via wild card for whoever finishes in second place in the NFC East, right. NFC North, right. and NFC South. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, and then you know, you think about just the Vikings Philadelphia conversation. You know, uh, yeah, that that's a that's a tight one there. But the Vikings already won the head-to-head battle. So there they got a little tiebreaker on the Eagles. You're right. I never even really thought about that aspect to, to start the show. But uh, that was big for the, all those teams. And, and, yeah, that makes the Rams' life very hard. And uh, certainly the Eagles-Dallas NFC East uh, clash there, that is going to come down now to just it's looking like it's going to be win the NFC East or you're going to be home. That's really all there is to it. Uh, but man, I just, um, the NFC is still so talented, so many good teams. Uh, and I just, I I just can't get over the game last night in general, Mike. I just, it was so fun to watch. It was old school football. I mean, I just felt like it was, you know, not a lot of like trick plays and things like that. It was, we're going to run the football. We're going to out hit you. Pete Carroll and Kyle Shanahan both have that mantra of like, I don't want you on the team unless you go pedal to the metal every play. And that's what we saw out there. We saw 22 guys who were just willing to put it on the line, play after play after play. And like what Pete Carroll said in the press conference, it's going to go a long way for his team. This is a battle-tested moment that's going to give them a lot of confidence, like they did the Ravens to beat the Patriots, where this can kind of be a, a springboard to go, okay, you know, we knew we were good, but now we know we're really good. Like, we're one of the best teams in the NFL, and let's build on that. But think about this. We have talked previously about what a battle the NFC playoffs will be and how the team that ultimately emerges may have nothing left when it's time to face the AFC representative in the Super Bowl. Right. Before we even get to the playoffs, we're going to have these regular season games that are physical, that are intense, that go down to the wire and maybe beyond. 
as everyone tries to position on the playoff tree. Number one, to get in. Number two, to finish as high as you possibly can. We've got more. Look, look at look at the schedules coming uh, it, up. It's the amazing. Saints and the 49ers get together. That is a huge game as it relates to the playoff picture. The Packers and the 49ers, gigantic game. We talked about Seahawks and 49ers getting together again. The Rams still play both the 49ers and the Seahawks again. There are some gigantic games that are coming up. And, and for the teams that aren't in the playoff mix, this is that one last opportunity to be relevant and throw a wrench in someone's gears like the Falcons did to the Saints on Sunday. Yeah, you're exactly right. But I think the aspect you bring up, you know, about the NFC in general, and especially because you look at a lot of these teams and before the playoffs even get here, you know, to your point, they're going to all be playing each other here down the stretch to where, man, the 49ers got to end the season. Three out of the last four games are at the Saints. They get Atlanta at home. Then they got to play the Rams and then at Seattle again to what you said. You know, the Saints, the last three games of their years, they're going to be playing against the Colts at Tennessee, and then at Carolina. Carolina still might be fighting for a spot at that point. You know, so it will be interesting. I mean, can you just imagine in the NFC playoffs some of these teams, like the one seed San Francisco 49ers, they could be sitting there going, are you kidding me? We're the one seed. We got a bye week, and we got to play the Seattle Seahawks or somebody like that to start the playoffs? Like, you know, that's just – it's going to be unbelievable TV and viewing for the NFC playoffs because I really look at it right now and go, all six teams could go to the Super Bowl and win it. And I would say maybe I'd give, you know, Dallas the least chance there, but still they have enough talent that you go, no, they have a Super Bowl roster. And if they get hot and turn it around, I wouldn't be shocked to see them make it a run. Yeah, but we talked about this yesterday. I look at their schedule the rest of the way. I look at the Eagles, and I think the Cowboys yeah. may not make They're the playoffs at all. And, you know, one other division to consider. I think we touched on this also yesterday in the aftermath of the Vikings-Cowboys game. The Vikings and the Packers. The, the, the Vikings are only one game behind Green Bay. They lost week two at Lambeau Field. They play week 16 on a Monday night. And that division and possibly a bye may come down to the last two weeks. The Vikings are at home both weeks. Packers Bears the Packers are on the road both weeks at Minnesota at Detroit and it could be that that you know the Packers go into week 16 as the two seed and they come out of week 17 as the sixth seed yeah there's no doubt I mean we could see a lot of juggling uh, as far as standings and where everybody is not only in just in the NFC North but throughout the NFC in general the last two and three weeks of the year I just can't get over it because stats did a great job of kind of putting all the schedules in front of us and uh, it's just going to be so many meaningful games down the stretch of December between really the upper class of the NFL and that's that's what football is all about to me it's hard hitting tight football games coaches got to make tough decisions that's why I want to tune in December type football and uh, I think we're going to get it. Meanwhile, with the 49ers losing previously eight, no, right. The saints losing previously seven and one, the 49ers were number one in the PFT power rankings. The saints were number two. There's going to be a new number one coming out later today. Yeah. And it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, mm, I think that I think it's time to give the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson their due. I mean, you're at number you're, three. You're going to have your work cut out for you this week. I, I'm, I'm actually really interested, interested to see what you're going to do um, as far as your, your PFT, your power rankings. Because uh, tomorrow, yeah, when you just try to sort out New England, Baltimore, San Francisco, New Orleans, and Seattle – Man, good luck with that, Mike. I'm going to I'm going to it's a win-win situation for me basically cuz I'm going to tell you you're wrong just about no matter either what. Way. So it's great. Yeah, either way. <laughs> I I'll t- I can tell you right now, barring some dramatic change, I'm going to put Lamar Jackson and the Ravens at number 1. Okay. I think they deserve and, it. And where I think, do you And I think right I think right now they are two? number 1. Where do you lean for number 2 now? That's to be determined. Okay, that's that's the tomorrow. tough one, really. Or, or you know when you'll find out? Sometime yeah. between noon and 1 Eastern at ProFootballTalk.com we'll have the full slate, but it's going to be a busy oh, morning. A i got some big decisions to make. Such a good tease by you. Way to go. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.